Hello, I'm John Adams, editor of Digital Photo, and welcome to this video lesson. One of the reasons you get Digital Photo and are watching this right now is because you enjoy being creative. In essence, this means you like making stuff and enjoy expressing your creativity through photography and imaging. Sometimes this involves finding the best angle or waiting for the best light on a scene, and other times it involves a more conceptual approach where you're looking to create an image that's in your head. The technique we're about to run through involves a little bit of both because it's about creating your own perfect landscape. This image is essentially a fantasy landscape because although the tree, the field and the sky were shot on the same day, they weren't all present in the same place at the same time. The tree was the creative starting point because I loved its shape and the way the light was striking it. I thought it would make a great focal point for a shot, but the environment it was in didn't really do it justice. So after shooting the tree in a cow field, I then went on a little mission to find a great foreground to carry the eye towards it. A short drive found an alternative field with a rows of crops acting as lead-in lines. They didn't actually go anywhere, but used in conjunction with the tree, I could change that. The final component required was a dramatic sky. These are really easy to find above you so long as you always carry a camera, but luckily I got one earlier on the same morning with wisps of cloud emanating from a point on the horizon. So we have all the components we need, we've got a tree, we've got a field with the lead-in lines and we've got a nice sky. All we have to do is put them together in a seamless fashion so the end result looks like a real photo. So the plan is to create something like this using these components, a tree, a field and a sky. And these three pictures are in the Start Images folder, so you can follow along with the technique and build this same conceptual landscape yourself. Right, well, we'll go from scratch. I'll close all of these down for the time being, get rid of those, get them all off screen. And I'm using Photoshop here, but you can do this in Elements as well, following exactly the same technique. The first thing we need to do is open up our sky. That's our backdrop. So we'll go to File, Open, and then navigate your way to the Start Images folder and open up treesky.jpg. Load that up first, and that will come up on screen. The next thing we need is our foreground picture, so the same process, go to File, choose Open, and pick your tree field image. Double click on that, and that will load too, and it will load straight over the top of your sky. But don't worry about that, because what we're going to do is get these two images into the same document. To do this, we're going to go to Select, and choose All, or hit the shortcut Control and A. That selects the entire field image, then we're going to copy it by going to Edit, and choosing Copy, or Control and C. And then we're done with the field, so we can hit Control and W to close it down. Because we copied it though, it's stored in memory, so all we've got to do is go to Edit and choose Paste, and we will slap our field straight over the top of the sky. Now I'm just going to take this out of the dock, undock it from the, uh, the top there, so we get a bit more space, because what you'll need on screen is your Layers panel. And if yours isn't already down the right-hand side, just go to Window and choose Layers, and it will turn up. There we go. There's our background. That's the sky. We can switch these on and off. There's our sky, and over the top of that is our field. Now, what we're first going to do in the Layers panel is we're going to change the blending mode of this field here. We're going to change it from Normal to Multiply. So click where it says Normal and just choose Multiply from the list, and you'll see the two kind of blended together. Not very successfully, but it's good enough for what we're going to do next. And what we're going to do is go into free transform mode. That's really quick and easy. Just hit Control and T on the keyboard, and you'll see a bounding box surrounding your image. Let me just make it a little bit bigger so you can see that bounding box. There we go. Now, what we're first going to do is drag the whole layer downwards. So we're just going to pull it downwards so we get our furrows, our crop furrows, appearing at the very bottom of the frame. And once we've done that, we can then drag this top handle downwards just to compress the field so it's about one third height. Something like that looks okay. I also want to level up this horizon. And to do that, I can go into the distort mode of Free Transform. And I do that really quickly and easily by holding the control key on the keyboard. Hold that down, then we can pull this corner handle and just straighten up that horizon so it's nice and level. Something like that looks pretty good there. So once you've done that, hit return on the keyboard or double click inside the bounding box and those changes will be set down. Now we've got our field sorted out, the next thing we need to work on is the sky. Now this is currently on the background layer, so we'll click on that to make it active. And then what we need to do is make sure it's editable. We can't really move the sky at the moment because it's a locked background layer. But to make it editable, just hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, then double click where it says background and that will instantly be changed into layer 0. 
That means we can now edit that layer. And what we're now going to do is squash our sky a bit. So we're going back into Free Transform, so that's Control and T on the keyboard. We got our bounding box again. We're going to drag this bottom handle upwards just to leave a bit of an overlap and get those lovely highlights, all those nice radiating clouds wisping out of the horizon. We want to get those in, so I'm just going to drag that, leave a bit of an overlap there. Something like that looks pretty good. And once you've got it to where you want it to be, double click inside that bounding box again and we're getting somewhere for the background of our image. But what we do have is this hard edge line, and we want to get rid of that. And to get rid of that, we're going to use a layer mask. So making sure we've still got our background layer selected, or rather our layer zero selected, we're going to click on this icon here, which is the Add Layer Mask icon. You'll find it at the top of the palette in Elements, or at the bottom in Photoshop. So we click on that, and we get a white rectangle alongside our sky. And if we paint black into this white rectangle, we hide what's on the layer. So we need to get ourselves a brush, so select the Brush tool from the toolbox, and then make sure that you've got black selected as your foreground color by hitting D and then X. That makes sure you've got black here as your foreground. And that loads your brush tip with that black color. Now we want a nice soft edge brush, so if we just select the Brush Preset Picker, Pick a soft round brush, doesn't matter what size, because we can change the size by using the square brackets keys. And I'm going to take it up to about 200 pixels, just by tapping the right key. We now need to take down the opacity. We can do that, I think about 20% will be good. So just move the opacity slider to about 20%. Or you can tap 2 on the numeric keypad on your keyboard. That will do the same thing. Now all we've got to do is paint away this hard edge line. So I'm just going to work into that line, and a little bit into the... Uh, the hedge above it and the field, and just paint along. We've got to lose that straight edge along there because that's going to look very unnatural, but the blend should be pretty decent if we just get in some of this uh, foliage around here, and we should get a nice natural looking blend between the two. And the natural blend comes from using that low opacity brush. And you can see in the layer mask, there's our sort of black strip running along here, and that's the bit we're painting away. So that's looking fairly good now. And once we've done that, I'm going to increase brush size to about 600 pixels. So that's just the right square brackets key. Tap that a few times till you get to 600. There we go, 600 pixels. And then what we're going to do is add a faint glow. We've got this nice sort of radiation of light coming from the horizon. So I'm just going to enhance that a little bit by just painting over like so. Just a few strokes of the brush, a nice big soft brush. You get that nice glow along the skyline, and that looks pretty good there. Yep, that's enough. And with those two layers, the sky and the foreground, and a little bit of masking, we've got our backdrop assembled, all ready for our tree. So let's open up the tree next. If we go to File Open, and pick the file called Tree. Double click on that, and that will load two on screen. Now what we've got to do is separate our tree from its background. We want to get rid of all of this background and just have the tree on its own as a cutout. Now you could do it manually with the lasso tool, but that would take you a long, long time getting around all these branches. So the easiest thing is to think, well, what's the simplest thing to select? And in this case, it's the sky. The sky is much easier to select than the, than the tree. So we're going to try and make a selection of the non-tree parts of the image. And we'll get this underway using, first of all, the magic wand tool. So you'll find that in the toolbox. It's grouped with the Quick Selection tool. Select the magic wand there. Then in the Tool Options bar, top of the screen in Photoshop, bottom of the screen in Elements, just make sure your tolerance is set to about 32. And the other thing you need to do is make sure that the contiguous box is not ticked. So make sure that's unticked and you've got a tolerance of 32. Then all we've got to do is click somewhere on the sky. There we go. And that's done a pretty good job of selecting all of the sky and we've got all the various gaps and holes in the tree as well. So that's pretty good to start with. But what we don't have yet is a selection of any of the foreground area. So to get this, we're going to use a different tool, and we're going to use the Quick Selection tool. So click on the magic wand, and you'll find the Quick Selection tool grouped with it. In Elements, you'll find it down in the Options bar, and you simply select the appropriate tool from the Tool Options bar. And what we're going to do now is use our Quick Selection tool. I've just got a slightly bigger brush, so I'm just going to hit the square brackets key. Slightly bigger brush there. What have I got? 90 pixels. That should do the trick. All I'm going to do is start clicking within the magic wand and drag downwards. And I'm going to start taking in the whole of the foreground. Just drag along. I've got the mouse held down. One click. And have we, we've just about got most of the scene there. We've got some of the trunk as well. We've got this bottom part of the trunk selected. 
and we want to remove that from the selection. So to remove something from a selection, we're going to hold down the Alt key, but I need a slightly smaller brush first. So I'm just going to hit the left square brackets key to make my brush a bit smaller. Then I'm going to hold Alt, start in this area here, and just drag downwards to try and take in that trunk. And that's done a pretty good job. Yep, that's not bad at all. I will just zoom in a little bit, so I'll grab the zoom tool. I'll go in tight. There we go. And we've got a... That's a bit too tight. I'll just Alt and click to come out a little bit. We need to get in this part of the trunk here, so I need to make that, uh, that part of the selection as well. So I'll go back to my Quick Selection tool. I'll hold down the Alt key. I'll use a slightly smaller brush, and I'm just going to nibble away holding the Alt key so we've got a minus symbol showing. And I'm just going to try and select that part of the tree. And that's not a bad job at all. Now if I zoom out by hitting Control and Zero, I can see the extent of it, and that's pretty good. But remember, we have the sky and the field selected at the moment, and not the tree. So we need to turn everything around and get the inverse of the selection we currently have. So to do that is nice and easy, Control, Shift and I on the keyboard, and we now have the tree selected and not all the surrounding area. Now you may need to tidy up your tree selection. If you want to do that, just use the lasso tool, the freehand lasso tool, and because you've got the tree selected, any parts of the tree you want to add, hold shift and draw around them. Any parts of the tree you want to take away, so anything that's not a tree, hold alt and make a selection. And by moving around it, zooming in tight, you'll soon get a good selection of the tree. But I'll stick with this now for the sake of brevity, it should work fine. Because what we need to do now is make sure that we don't have any halo around the edge of the tree. And to do that we're going to modify the selection we've made. So to do this go up to Select, choose Modify and then choose Contract. And what we're going to do is increase the contraction to about 2 pixels. That means we'll go inside the edge, click OK to that. And then to give us a slightly soft edge to the tree, we're going to go to the same thing, select, modify, and this time we're going to choose feather. And here we want a tiny feather radius, so I'm going to go for 0.5 pixels in the feather radius and click OK. So that should have contracted our selection inside the tree's perimeter, and it will have softened the edge of it just a touch to make it look like a natural blend. With that done, we've made our selection, but it's a good idea to actually punch it into a separate layer. So all I'm going to do is hit Control and J on the keyboard, and that puts my tree on a separate layer from the background. And there it is, in all its pride and glory, nicely selected. And what we need to do is make sure with this bit's copied, so we can Control and click on layer 1 on the thumbnail there, and then hit Control and C to make sure our tree is copied. Now, because you've spent some time making the selection of this tree, and you may want to use it again at some stage, it's a good idea to save this particular file as a PSD. That will keep all of your layers together. So save that on your hard drive somewhere in case you want to come back to your tree selection in the future. That saves you having to make all that selection work again. But for now, I can close this down because I've copied it, so I'll just click on the little cross here, get rid of our tree. We're not going to save it for this time. And then to get our tree into the image, I'm going to hit Control and V on the keyboard. And when you paste the layer into another image, it'll always go on the layer above the one that's active. Now at the moment, my sky layer is active, so what I need to do is just drag this layer to, that's my tree, up to the top of the layer stack, and then it will stand proud of the others and be on top. So the layers palette, you're always looking down on it, so whatever's on top is the thing you see first. Now I think that tree is a bit too big at present, so what we're going to do is scale it down a bit. To do that, hit Control and T to go into free transform mode, and then we can simply drag these corner handles to make our tree a bit smaller in size, something like that I think. Then we can move it into position so it's on the horizon. That's still a bit too big, so I'm going to take it down a bit more. Something like that looks pretty good there. I think that's about the right size. And I'll park it in position just there. And once you're happy with the position of it, just double click inside the bounding box and the tree will be set down. Now we've got to make sure that the uh, tree joins the ground in a convincing way, so all we'll do, we'll zoom in tight on this bit here, just where it joins, and you can see there, we've got a bit of a problem that looks rather artificial. So what we need to do is add a layer mask to our tree, and that's how we can blend it in with the rest of the scene. So we add a layer mask, and then we need to get our brush tool again, so pick up the brush tool. We need a really small brush here, so I'll hit the left square brackets key to come down in size, and I think, oh, something like... It's probably 10 pixels or so is what we need. I'll zoom in even tighter with Control Plus. There we go. And now, because we've got black selected as the foreground colour, we can paint into the tree and reveal the, uh, the foliage underneath. So I need to increase my brush opacity now to about 100%, and I can just start painting away. Wherever I paint 
over the tree I will see the background and if I go too far as I have there what I need to do is then hit X to swap to white and now I can paint the tree back in so a nice small brush there we go and we just go along these lines to get a nice accurate join between the tree and the leaves so something like that looks pretty good we'll go around there doing the edge first that's the sort of thing I can use a slightly bigger brush to fill in the gap and we've masked our tree into our landscape scene and that looks like a pretty convincing join you can perhaps spend a little bit more time than me on that but that's that's not bad at all so we'll double click the hand tool to come back to full screen and we can see it in all its glory and that's looking rather nice but we need to change the colors to make sure the tree and the landscape match we're going to do that using a levels adjustment layer but we're going to use this adjustment layer in a special way so it only affects the tree so first things first let's create our adjustment layer so we click on the adjustment layer icon that's this half black half white circle click on that and choose levels from the list this brings up our levels palette i'm just going to move that out of the way along with these boxes and then what we're going to do is clip this levels adjustment to the trees layer so it only affects the tree and to do that hold down alt on the keyboard and then click on the line between the two layers click there and it will jump across to the right and that means now when we make a change to the levels we will only affect the tree and not the rest of the image underneath it now what we want to do is warm up the colors of the tree somewhat and we'll do that using the levels palette here and to do that is really easy just click where it says RGB and choose red first and foremost and then if we move this middle slider if we move it to the left we get more red in the image if we move it to the right we get less red or cyan the opposite of red so we'll go back to zero and we're just going to move it to about 1.2 something like that that looks pretty good there yeah about 1.2 and that gives us a little extra warmth there and before we come out of this particular palette we're then going to switch from the red channel to the blue channel and we're going to move it in the opposite direction we're going to move this middle slider to the right that introduces more yellow in the image now that's obviously too much there our tree's got a very peculiar color so what we need is just a subtle change so something like 0.85 to 0.9 that kind of area there we get a nice bit of warmth on the tree so we can close this palette now and then to see the difference we've made we can switch that adjustment layer on and off you can see there that subtle bit of warmth just makes the tree match the rest of the environment now things are coming together really nicely and all we need to do really is add a bit more contrast to the entire scene just to finish it off we'll do this again using an adjustment layer and we'll use levels once more so we click on the adjustment layer icon choose levels from the list there it is and this time we're not going to clip the layer instead by leaving it at the top of the stack it will affect all of the layers underneath it so what we can do now is adjust the contrast in the levels palette and that will affect the whole scene and to adjust contrast we need to leave it in the RGB color mode and all we have to do is move in our black point a little bit and that darkens the sky rather nicely we could also perhaps move in the white point a touch maybe just a fraction there and that gives us a little kick in contrast which looks great you could if you want to you can move the midtone slider as well to make it brighter or darker overall if you want a really dramatic look but I'm gonna leave mine set to one because I think they look pretty good as it was so there we go a quick tweak of the uh, the shadow slider there and a quick tweak of the highlight slider and we can then of course switch the layer on and off to see the difference it makes and there we were before there we are afterwards and there's just that little spike in contrast that gives the image a bit more bite and there we have it there's our conceptual fantasy landscape built from the three components our tree our sky and our foreground and I think they look rather nice together if we backtrack we can see how the whole process has gone together we can just switch off all these eye icons alongside the layers there's our sky there's the land that we blended into it then we have our tree which we cut out from another image we tweaked the levels on the tree to get the color match looking good and then we added a bit of contrast to the overall scene just to make it look fantastic all right we'll give that a try and see how easy it is to build your own fantasy landscapes and then have a look at your own local area find the components that you'd like to see bonded together into a landscape image and you'd be surprised what you can cook up all right thanks for watching and i'll see you next time